If you've seen logarithms before, this is probably how you are told to calculate them. So for example, if you want to calculate log base 2 of 64, you have to ask yourself the question, uh, 2 to what power is equal to 64? And there's a simple rule on how to convert the logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. So we just take uh, the index of 2 here and put it as the base of our new equation. We take the uh, answer of our old equation and put it as the power of our new equation. And then we take uh, what's in parenthesis of the logarithm and put it as the answer of our new equation. So this is how you transform a logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. And once you have the exponential equation, uh, you can solve, you can find the power of 2 that would give you the right answer. So if you've seen logarithms uh, like this, uh, this is perfectly fine because this is exactly what logarithms are. And here they're teaching you what logarithms are uh, by telling you how to reformulate or reorder the logarithmic equation into an exponential one that you're assumed to be already familiar with. Uh, so like I said, this way is perfectly fine, uh, but I'd like to give you uh, another way uh, that ends up being equivalent, puts the emphasis uh, somewhere else. Uh, so that might help a bit with your intuition. Uh, but before I do that, let's first figure out where logarithms fit uh, with respect to the other operations that we know. Let's first look at addition. So let's say that this morning I had a certain amount of apples, but I forgot how many apples I had. But I do remember that during the day I went to the shop and I bought three apples. And now that I'm back home, I can uh, count the apples I have, and I know that I have a total of seven apples. So again, I don't remember how many apples I had this morning, but I now know that I have seven apples. Uh, is there a way to figure out how many apples I had at the beginning of the day? Uh, so here, if we want to figure out how many apples we had at the beginning of the day, uh, we have to undo the plus three. And to undo the plus three, we can just do a minus three. So we get that the number of apples I had this morning is equal to 4. Because the minus 3 uh, undoes the plus 3, uh, we say that subtraction is the inverse of addition. If I want to cancel a plus something, I just have to do minus of that thing. Let's now look at multiplication. Uh, so again, a similar situation. Uh, let's say I had a secret number, uh, but I forgot what that number is. Uh, I just remembered that when I multiplied by 3, uh, that I get 12. Is there a way to figure out what that secret number must be? Uh, so again, all we have to do here is we have to undo the times 3. And we can do that by dividing by 3. And we get that the secret number must have been 4. Uh, only 4 would give me a result of 12 if I multiplied by 3. So here, because division undoes multiplication, uh, we say that division is the inverse of multiplication. So thinking about division this way also kind of tells you why uh, we can't divide by zero. Because let's say, again, I had a secret number that I completely forgot. And the only thing I remember is that when I multiply that number by zero, I get zero. Uh, can you figure out what my original number must have been? So here, uh, anything times zero is equal to zero. So my original number could have been anything. So when we're saying that we can't divide by zero, uh, it's not because the universe is going to explode or anything. Is we're just saying that we can't know for sure what that original number was. Okay, uh, let's now look at exponentiation. So again, uh, let's say I had a secret number, and I don't remember what that number is. I remember that when I cube it, I get 64. So again, can we backtrack? Can we undo the cubing to know what my original number was? So here we can. Uh, we just take the cubic root on both sides. And here we get that my secret number must have been 4. So if we want to undo a power, uh, what we have to do is we have to take uh, the root of that number. OK, so let's recap. Uh, we saw that subtraction cancels with addition. We saw that division cancels with multiplication. And we saw that roots cancels with powers. Uh, so we have the three basic operations and the inverse for each. So where do logarithms fit in all of this? Uh, so this table is a bit misleading. Uh, it suggests that each operation only has one inverse. Uh, but if you think about it carefully, each operation acts on two numbers. Uh, so there's potentially two inverses, one to cancel the number on the right 
and want to cancel the number on the left. So the inverses we found uh, cancel the number on the right. So these are called right inverses. So let's look at this more uh, accurate table here. So like we saw, if I have a secret number and I add 3 to it, and that gives me 7, uh, we can figure out what the secret number must be by canceling the plus 3, by undoing the plus 3, by doing minus 3 on both sides. And we get that the secret number must have been 4. Uh, so if I, if I don't know what the secret number is, but I know what I added, then I can undo that and get the original number. But let's change the question a bit. Let's say I know my original number. Let's say I know that my original number is 4, uh, but I forgot what I added to that number, and I know, but I know that the answer is 7. Uh, can I still figure out what that secret number is? And here again, we can just do minus 4. Uh, subtraction still works, and that gives us 3. So here, uh, the left inverse also happens to be the right inverse. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because uh, if I know which number I have, but I don't know which number I've added, well, that's the same thing as not knowing which number uh, I have and knowing which number I added. Uh, because a plus b is the same thing as b plus a. Uh, which number is on the left and which number on the right doesn't really matter. Uh, so this is why we don't really think of inverses as left and right inverses, because for addition, uh, they're the same thing. And similarly, uh, multiplication is also commutative. a times b is also equal to b times a. Uh, so the left inverse for multiplication also happens to be its right inverse. So for both addition and multiplication, uh, there's no difference between the left and right inverses. Uh, so that kind of explains why we don't usually make the distinction between the left and right inverse and just call it the inverse. And because addition and multiplication are by far the most common operations, uh, it might give the false belief that all operations only have one inverse. Uh, but if we look at exponentiation, uh, we can immediately see that it's not commutative, because if I do uh, 4 to the 3, uh, that gives me 64. But if I do uh, 3 to the 4, that gives me 81. So we can clearly see that for exponentiation, we can't just swap the left and right numbers as we please. We get different results. So here we can potentially have a different left inverse from our right inverse. So what oper So let's say I have 4 to the 3. What operation do I need to do to it to uh, cancel the 4 at the base and just get the 3? So as a hint, uh, if I do the fourth root of 4 to the 3, uh, that will not give me 3. So I can't use roots to cancel the base. So based on the topic of this video, you might have figured it out. And the answer is logarithms. Uh, logarithms are just the left inverse of exponentiation. Uh, that's where they fit with respect to the other operations that we already know. So to recap, uh, if you want to undo a plus 3 on the right, all you have to do is a minus 3. If you want to undo a 4 plus on the left, all you have to do is minus 4. If you want to undo a times 3 on the right, all you have to do is a divide by 3. And if you want to undo a 4 times on the left, all you have to do is divide by 4. If you want to uh, undo a to the power of 3 on the right, all you have to do is to take the cubic root. And if you want to undo a base of 4 on the left, all you have to do is take a log base 4. So the only thing you have to remember about logarithms is that a logarithm cancels with the base. So it doesn't cancel with the power, it just cancels with the base of an exponentiation. So if you have uh, x to the n uh, and you want to cancel the x, all you have to do is a log base x. So the log will cancel with the base and you're left with just n. And here I'm going to let you think about that one for yourself, but the inverse of an inverse is back the original operation. Just like the inverse of subtraction is back addition. Uh, so if you want to take, if you want to undo the logarithm here, all you have to do is add a base of x. So these two will cancel each other out, and you're left with a uh, with n. So thinking about logarithms this way ends up being equivalent to the way we did it at the beginning of the video. Uh, it's just that here I put an emphasis on cancellation. I'm telling you what logarithms are by telling you how they cancel with other parts of the equation. Uh, so thinking about logarithms this way isn't any better or worse than the other way, uh, but it highlights a different aspect of logarithms, so it may or may not be more intuitive for you. So let's recap. A log base x cancels with a base of x, 
and a base of x cancels with a log base x. These are the only two things that you need to remember. Let's see how we can use them. So let's say I want to calculate a log base 2 of 64, but the only thing I remember is that a log base 2 cancels with a base of 2. So if I want to get rid of my log base 2 here, I need to find a base of 2 somewhere. But the only thing I have is a 64. So what I need to do is I need to rewrite my 64 as a power of 2, and then I'll have a base of 2 to cancel with the log base 2. So what I have to do is I have to ask myself, uh, 2 to what power is equal to 64? So you can see I ended up asking exactly the same question at the, as the beginning. Uh, but here I feel it's a little bit more motivated. It gives you a reason why you want to ask this question. Uh, so let's figure it out. Uh, so the first power of 2 is 2, uh, times 2 is 4, uh, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. So 64 is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth power of 2. So I know that uh, 64 is equal to 2 to the 6. So now that I know that 64 is 2 to the 6, I can just replace this 64 in this expression here. So I have that log base 2 of 64 is the same thing as log base 2 of 2 to the 6. And that's because 2 to the 6 is exactly the same thing as 64. Uh, but now I have a log base 2 and I have a base of 2. So I know that these two things just cancel each other, and I'm left with just 6. So I know that my final answer is 6. So let's look at another example. Uh, let's say I have the equation log base 3 of x is equal to 4, and I want to solve for x. Uh, so when I want to solve for x, I want to isolate the x. Uh, so I want to undo the log base 3 because that's in the way. Uh, so all I need to remember is that a base of 3 cancels with a log base 3. So all I need to do is add a base of 3 uh, here. But if I add a base of 3 on the left-hand side, I need to add a base of 3 on the right-hand side as well. So here I get that 3 to the log base 3 of x is equal to 3 to the 4. Uh, that's because log base 3 of x is equal to 4. Uh, but here, uh, the 3 and the log base 3 cancel each other out. And I'm left with just x is equal to 3 to the 4. And then uh, I can just calculate that. Uh, 3 to the 4 is equal to 81. So I've solved for x. Uh, but here I just want to note that uh, you could have also solved this using the other way. Uh, so if you remember, the way you can change logarithmic equations into uh, exponential equations is you take uh, the index of the log, it becomes your new base. You take the answer, and that becomes your uh, power. And then you take what's in the parenthesis, and that becomes uh, your new answer. So you could have gone uh, from this equation to this equation in just one step. So again, it's debatable which way is uh, better. Uh, but my suggestion is just uh, know both ways and use the one that's more intuitive for you. So let's look at another example. Uh, let's say I have the equation uh, 5 to the x is equal to 100, and I want to solve for x. So here, since I want to solve for x, I want to isolate the x. Uh, but it's at the exponent. So if I want the x by itself, I need to undo the base of 5. Uh, so all I have to remember is that a log base 5 cancels a base of 5. Uh, so I'm just going to do a log base 5 on both sides. Uh, but here, this log base 5 cancels with this base of 5, and I'm left with just x. And I have that x is equal to log base 5 of 100. So here we're technically done. Uh, we've isolated our x, and on the right, we just have an expression with no variables in it. So on the right, it's just a number. Uh, if you need to express that number in decimal form, uh, then it's going to be a bit harder uh, because log base 5 of 100 is not as nice as log base 2 of 64. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not a nice number. It's a bit like uh, the square root of 2 or pi. Uh, log base 5 of 100 is not a rational number. Uh, so decimal notation isn't good enough to exactly express uh, this number. But if you want, uh, you can approximate it using a calculator. Uh, so you can just plug that into your calculator and you get that log base 5 of 100 is uh, close to 2.86. Yeah. Oh, and here again, I want to mention that you could have also solved this using uh, the way I, I showed at the beginning of the video. So remember, if you have a logarithmic equation, uh, you just take uh, the index of the log, it becomes your base. Uh, you take the answer, it becomes your power. And you take uh, what's in the parenthesis, and it becomes uh, your answer here. So again, you could have just gone from here to there in a single step. Uh, 
So it's up to you which way you like best. Let's look at another example. Uh, so let's say I have the equation log base x of 125 is equal to 3, and I want to solve for x. Uh, so here, uh, I really don't like the log base x. Uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure how to think about it. So I'm going to try to get rid of it, and hopefully that's going to make my equation easier. Uh, so all I have to remember is that a base of x uh, cancels a log base x. I'm going to add a base of x here, uh, but if I add it on the left, I also have to add it on the right. Uh, so like I said, I've added a base of x on both sides. Well, on the left-hand side here, I have x to the log x, so that cancels each other. Uh, so I'm left with 125 is equal to x cubed. And then here from there, all I need to do is take the cubic root on both sides, and I just get that x is equal to 5. And again, uh, you could have done this uh, in just one step here. Uh, remember, uh, the index of the log becomes the base. Uh, the answer becomes the power. And what's in the parenthesis uh, becomes the new answer. Let's look at a final example. Uh, let's say I want to calculate log base 6 of 18 plus log base 6 of 12. Uh, so I know that the log base 6 will cancel with a base of 6. But unfortunately, this time, uh, 18 is not a nice power of 6. So I won't be able to use that to my advantage. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that if you do an operation and then it's inverse, uh, you get the original number back. So what I mean is that if I have x, so if I do an operation, if I do plus 3 and then it's inverse, minus 3, then I get the original number back. Uh, but here, this operation I'm going to do is putting a base of 6. So here, if I have x and add a base of 6, and then take a log base 6 of that, then I get my x back. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do to this whole expression here. Uh, so again, it's okay if it's not clear why I want to do that, just as long as you understand that I can do that. So this is what I get here. So again, I just took uh, this whole expression here, I put it as the exponent with a base of 6, and I just took a log base 6 of all of that to undo the operation I just did, so that everything stays the same. Okay, uh, but now I have 6 to the power of uh, log base 6 of 18 plus log base 6 of 12. So I have 6 to the power of something plus something else. Here, I can use the exponent laws. I know that 6 to the x plus y is just 6 to the x times 6 to the y. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this 6 to the power of these two things, and I'm just going to do 6 to the log base 6 of 18 times 6 to the log base 6 of 12. So again, I just took these two powers and split it into two uh, exponentials. Uh, but now I have 6 to the log base 6 of 18. Uh, but here, I know that the base of 6 cancels with the log base 6. So here I can just cancel this here. And similarly for the log base 6 of 12, the base of 6 will just cancel the log base 6. So here I'm left with 18 times 12. So here I end up with log base 6 of 18 times 12. Uh, but that, I can just calculate it. That's just uh, 216. Uh, but now if I want to calculate the log base, base 6 of 216, I'm going to have an easier time. Uh, because 6 to the 1 is 6, 6 squared is 36 and 6 cubed is 216. Uh, so 216 is just equal to 6 to the 3. So I'm going to make this substitution, and I get that log base 6 of 216 is equal to log base 6 of 6 to the 3. But I know that the log base 6 uh, cancels with the base of 6, uh, so then I'm left with just 3. Uh, so that's how you would solve it. If you're familiar with logarithms, though, uh, you're probably familiar with log rules as well, uh, which would tell you that you could just go from this step uh, to this step, uh, because there's a log rule that says that if you're adding two logs together, uh, well, that's the same thing as just one log of the two things multiplied together. Uh, so in real life, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to learn the log rules instead of doing it from scratch, uh, because this first step here is not obvious at all. Uh, but by doing it from scratch, though, you can kind of see where the log rules come from. So you can see that this log rule in particular uh, comes from the fact that we were able to split uh, this power here. So this log rule comes from uh, the power rule. And here as a side note, uh, I find this question interesting 
because even though we don't know what log base 6 of 18 is exactly, and we don't know what log base 6 of 12 is exactly, uh, we know that when we add them together, uh, we get 3 exactly. So I find that a little bit interesting. So this is all I have for this video. Uh, so again, this is just a very, very slightly different way uh, to think about logarithms. It's not name changing or anything, uh, but it highlights a different aspect of logarithms. So if you found the original way to think of logarithms a bit cumbersome, uh, then hopefully this new way is a bit more intuitive for you. Oh, so thanks for watching.